Hi everyone, it's Megan from uh, Megan B. Stitching. Yes, I'm tired. Yes, I look tired. <laughs> um, sorry it's been a couple weeks. It has been insanity around here. Um, I was not here at all last week. I was on a cruise uh, in the East Caribbean. Very, very fun. Um, and for those of you who are in Stitch Mania, you've already heard um, the story. I'm at a show. I have my stitching out while we're waiting for the show to start. So it's me, then my husband, and then another couple. And the the wife of the other couple is kind of looking. She's like, is that the reader? <laughs> and I'm going, you're a stitcher because you just did that pattern by the name not, you know, it, it was very specific. And I'm like, yeah. It's like, I love to. She's like, well, I'm a stitcher too. Well, it turns out it was the crafty curator. We were on the same cruise together. And not only that, we went to the same show and sat two seats away from each other. So we started talking. Uh, you can read her story. She did it beautifully. Um, we started talking for a little bit. My husband's just like, I have no clue what you guys are saying. <laughs> this is all Chinese to me. Um, anyway, but that was very fun. I mean, on this cruise of over 6,000 people, I found another Stitcher. So, anyway, I gotta binge watch her channel and all that fun stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of gonna catch up on stuff. Um, I did bring stitching on the cruise. Um, the reader was a new start. Um, I had a couple new starts on the cruise. You know, you gotta, you gotta bring the stitching. You just gotta. Um, anyway, and then uh, I'll just show some haul uh, that I've gotten over the last little bit, and then kind of some plans, and we'll go from there and kind of do a mixy whatever. And uh, anyway, as I said, I'm kind of tired. The uh, the ground is still, you know, doing this. For those of you who have been on cruises, you know what I'm talking about. It's still going for me, pretty strong. I didn't get seasick. I didn't get sick. I haven't gotten sick. Didn't, no motion sickness. Nothing. I just still feel the floor moving like I'm on the ship. It's okay. It's extending the cruise. So, anyway, I'll probably be throwing in some little stories here and there. Maybe. I don't know. As I said, it's one of those days. Um, let me start out as my brain is catching up with the rest of everything. Um, it is Wednesday, June 26th, and I have no clue what Stitchy... <laughs> Can you tell I was just watching Kitten Stitcher? <laughs> For, forget calling it Floss Tube. It's Stitchy Tube. Anyway. Yeah. This is Floss Tube number something or other. Floss Tube number awesome! Okay, well, I, let me delve into what I brought on the cruise, kind of show you where I was at, um, and kind of what I worked on, and we'll go from there. So, one of the, uh, one of the ones that I brought on the cruise was Joan Elliott, the reader. This is one I got from Cindy when I was up there. I went, we... Our crews left on the 16th. We flew out the 15th. I was up at Cindy's on the 14th. <laughs> it, was, it was a busy weekend. Anyway, um, I was working on inventorying all of the Joan Elliott's and came across this and I was like, this would have been me if I would have lived in this time. With some stitching over here and stuff. And she's like, you have to have it. So, anyway. So I decided to start this one and I started this one on... A fabric party from Fabric Flare, and this is Daydreams. It's an even weave 28, and that's how far I got. Oh, I should say, I didn't get this far because I've actually added in. So, like, this blue I'm starting to add in is new. Um, and, like, these six little green things are new. But everything else was done in the course of the cruise and on the flight home. Yeah, I'm in love with this piece. And look at how cool it is on the fabric! Is that like the perfect fabric for this piece? Anyway, I love it. I, I currently don't really want to put this one down. <laughs> I really have been stitching on it. 
constantly for about almost a week, actually. Well, and then, of course, as often as you can stitch on a cruise, which actually we had kind of a lot of downtime, so I was able to get some stitching with that. So that was uh, a new start that I brought and worked on. Then, this was a whip. I brought a kind of a mix of new starts, whips, just trying to mix it up. Hang on, I'm trying to find the picture. Okay, here we go. So I brought uh, this one, The Gift, by Nina Lawson. Just a gorgeous, it's so cute, I love her hair. Anyway, and I am doing this one. I know this is by Fibrolicious. I could probably say it was Maldive Dreams or something like that. Anyway, what I love about this is it's a gradient. And so I'm kind of color coordinating it. So I worked some more on his tail. And you can see, if I put the picture up here, how the gradient will be. So he's kind of the green orange, going over to the green orange. I guess I'll hold it back here. And then she's kind of the purple blue over by the purple blue. So, anyway, took a little while to figure that one out. Oh, my needles won me. Not to self, don't put your needle like that in the middle of the fabric. Need to pick up some more. I'm in love with Pat Carson needles. So I've got to pick up some more of those because I'm kind of just leaving them in projects so I don't have to be hunting for needles or have to constantly be remembering to switch them out. And since I stitch in hand, um, I don't necessarily use needle minders. Oh, <laughs> this is a different view of the craft room. This is from where I originally started is that side and then I went to that side and now I'm at this side. So I'm actually going to turn this a little because you can see that right there. That's my needle minder collection. That's actually not all of them. There's another little one right over here on my desk um, that has other needle minders on it. So those are my three littles. That was when they were really little. So um, yeah, anyway, you can see that's pretty full. That's just my happy decor. I love it. Okay, so that was that one. Um, this was another one I started before I went on the cruise. Um, put just a couple stitches in it. Um, not too many. But it's another one I like. I'm, that's one I'm doing for my mom. She doesn't watch this, so it's totally cool. So it's the Rosewood Manor, Dreaming of Sunflowers. My mom loves sunflowers. So, and I'm doing this one on Sky Slushy by Fabric Flare, and this is a 28 even weave. So just kind of start at the middle there. Anyway, it's actually a pretty quick little stitch up. So I'll put some more on that, but I like the, I like how the blue is on that. Not just a, a plain blue, but it has some personality, which I like. Um, brought that, but I didn't work on it. That was uh, Savior's, a Savior's Praise. <coughs> Excuse me. But I didn't even work on it, so I'm not even going to show that, because really no progress has been done on it. Um, this is a new start. And I didn't get super far on it, but it was a new start. This is a Victoria Evchenko. We all know I love my Victoria Evchenkos. This is the magic of Elsa. And there was no way in the world I was doing her on that boring brown fabric. Or tan, if you want to be like taupe. Whatever. <laughs> was not doing it on that. No, 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 no. Much too boring. And life is too short to stitch on boring fabric. So this is the limited edition May Seasonal 2019 from Fabric Flare. 
and it's called Ice Gemstone. And need I say more? Yeah. So that's how far I got, just kind of starting on her face. That's so much better. She's, I mean, she's gonna be gorgeous. Yeah. It, I mean, as soon as I saw the fabric, I knew something else was going on there. It was just, it was just happening. So, yeah. Elsa was happening on that fabric. Put it back in its slip cover. Okay, so that was a new start. Um, I brought Paradise Found, but I don't believe I put any stitches into that, so we won't even pull that one out. Okay, let me go over here. What other one did I work on? Oh, here we go. So this was another start. I have two piles because this is also for magical stitches. So... Picked up this one from Cindy. Last Stitch Cemetery. I've seen this be done a lot of time when it comes with all the little charms. So we've got Started and Forgotten, Half Stitched, Too Old, Lost Interest. So. This is another one I'm stitching on some fun fabric. This was a, a piece I got. I think this was a this was a um, a fabric of the month in one of the fabric flares. Anyway, it's a fabric flare. With cool glitter bats on it. Anyway, that's how far I've gotten. Just working on that first tombstone. But yeah, I mean they. So these bats they are painted on, but they're very easy to stitch through. So there, it's it's a very thin thin layer. And, I mean, as you can see, I've stitched over it here. And, I mean, it's, it, it's like you're not stitching through anything at all. It doesn't gum up your needle. It's not hard to push it through. And, actually, counting is quite easy. And you can actually just count through it. It's, it's pretty nice. I, I enjoy working on it. So, um, I know a lot of Gavork's newer fabrics just have it... It's not applied on like this, it's part of the fabric, it's part of the print, so you don't have any of that glitter overlay. I personally don't mind it. Um, I do know that there were some pattern, or some fabrics that I saw when I was sorting their fabrics that had like thick things of glitter, and yeah, I wouldn't have done those. I would have had to stitch like around them or something. I don't, I don't think that caught on very, very much. So, he doesn't do that anymore, as far as I know. Okay, so this was another, this was one I'd already started, but I decided to put some more stitches in it. So this is the uh, Rovaris Spooky Tree. Yeah, glare. There we go. Under the Spooky Tree. And, and I have, I also have... And all these little charms for it. Like a thread that's trying to escape. Um, and this I'm doing on... This is on an Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, Astrius. Astrius. Anyway, I saw this and I just knew it had to be done. Because, I mean, okay, the, the brown is okay, but it's still just kind of plain. Purple! Totally perfect for a spooky Halloween tree. My bag is trying to fall. Anyway, so I had that bottle partially started, so I finished up the scorpion poison bottle and started on the tree. So when I originally started this, I didn't have the uh, uh, weeks for the tree, so I picked that up from Cindy, and then I was able to start the tree. Anyway, I really like it because it's like a gray bluey color. It's a really cool color. Um, it's... What color is it? It's number 2103 Peacoat. 
Anyway, it's a cool color. I'm really liking the effect it's doing on the tree. Now, with this fabric, it's going to be tight on the top and bottom because of the height, but it had to happen on this fabric. It was just... It was too perfect to not put it on this one. Um, and then the last project that I brought and worked on is one of my two 40 count silk gauze that I have in the works. And this one is the, get a little picture out here, it's the Kranich Silks Christmas Visits, Christmas Visit. So this uses Kranich Silk, um, so not the Kranich Braid at all. So it was like Silk Moray. Anyway, it's actually really soft, really nice to work with, and I've really been enjoying it. You just see all my little silk separated. Um, you just need one strand, and I just do a, a, a tent stitch. And so I had got a bunch of the sky done already, and I basically finished up the sky. Move this green out of the way. Anyway, so I finished up the sky did this part of the house and started on this tree. So, let me put my hand behind that and you can see it a little better. So I worked on this um, while waiting for the plane in one of our many delays <laughs> going to Fort Lauderdale and then worked on it on the plane. Um, yeah, our, our flight out, we ended up getting in two hours later than we thought we were. Um, we flew southwest, and so we go to Salt Lake, we get there, of course, sufficiently early, so we're not having any issues with that, and then everybody gets on the plane, and pretty much nothing happens. There's this flurry of activity going on, you've got, uh, I mean, people coming in and out. Turns out the plane was 800 pounds overweight, and you can't take off when you're 800 pounds overweight. That doesn't work with fuel, you know, the, how much they allocate and whatnot. Anyway, so that took probably 40 minutes for them to resolve that. And uh, my husband did ask the uh, flight attendant how you make a plane at 100 pounds lighter. And her answer was basically shuffling freight. So my guess is some, probably some bags that were going to the, same end destination, we're moved to another plane, or stuff that wasn't needed was taken up. I don't know what happened. But they managed to get us off the ground. And then we had to stop in Denver. And then in... Was it in Denver? No, I think on Denver we, we didn't have a problem. I think on... So we stopped in Denver. They deplaned everyone except for us. We gotta get really nice seats. Then they reloaded the plane. Flew to... Um, Orlando. And then in Orlando, we had another little layover. Get on our, our second plane. We sit, and they've got the, you know, the tech guys are there, and there was something going on. Anyway, so that was another massive delay. <laughs> anyway, we were supposed to get into Fort Lauderdale at like mm, 11. We got in at 1. So in the morning. So at least the nice thing is, um, so this cruise was my husband, my husband's parents 50th anniversary and they took all seven kids and spouses minus two. Um, one has a baby that's too young and the other has a, uh, a child with Down syndrome that gets uh, sick really frequently. So they have to, usually one of the parents have to stay with them. They can't both go at the same time. Um, so anyway, there were 14 of us. And we luckily, we were one of a uh, group of four. So my husband's younger brother and old brother, so on the bookends of him. So those three, the other two had gotten in earlier. And then we got in. And so we went to the hotel that had been done. And yeah, that was it. We'll leave that hotel experience out of the books. I It was a cheap motel. We'll 
put it that way. Anyway, Lily survived the night. And then another brother and his wife got in about the same time. We did, went to a different hotel, and then pretty much everyone else that was coming in, they were doing um, a red eye, and they all got delayed two hours as well. So we at least got sleep. Half of the family got in at like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning, and, you know, low times to start getting on the ship was like 10, 10 10.30, so... They didn't really get much sleep. They were pretty tired that night. Um, anyway, that was the project I worked on during our delays. So that's the story of our delays. We luckily didn't have delays on the way back, but we did have a stop in Denver we didn't know we were going to have. So actually, there was a little bit of a delay on the way back. So Southwest likes their delays. <laughs> do their salted peanuts anymore. They're roasted, yummy, delicious peanuts anymore. No, it's everyone has. Hey, my mom has a peanut allergy, so I'm totally sympathetic with people who have peanut allergies. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, they were known for their roasted peanuts. I remember eating those things when I was little and flying on Southwest. One of the best things ever. I don't have them anymore. And pretzels just aren't as good. They really aren't. They're nice taste. Okay, moving on. <laughs> From planes and peanuts. Um, so that's really what I worked on. And that's really all I've worked on in the last couple weeks. So I haven't done much besides those. So no grandios, doohickeys, whatnots. Um... Anyway, I gotta check something. This is my notebook that I use to keep track of magical stitches. Oh, I did join another one. So there's magical stitches, which I've already talked about. And then there is the quest to destroy the one ring. Did I mention I'm a nerd? And a geek? And all of the things in between that? So in addition to going through Harry Potter and doing all of that, I'm now also um, uh, going to Mordor to destroy the One Ring and making it back. So. That's what's going on there. Um, but I'm still, still getting into the swing of the quests on the, the Mordor. So they have the ultimate quest, which is... Um, you're traveling to each location. So, someone, I, I don't know who, basically they created how many miles it is to go to the different locations. So, to go from Bag End to Rivendell, Rivendell to the Lonely Mountain, Hobbiton to Rutblock, etc., etc. And then it even breaks down into who goes where. So, you've got, you know, when Merry and Pippin go from Rowish to Isengard, and then Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli go from Rowish to Isengard. So that's two different trips. And then Frodo and Sam go from Rowish to Mount Doom. And... <laughs> yes. So, and Gandalf and Pippin go from Isengard to Minas Tirith. And anyway, you can see these crazy miles. And so what they've done is basically translated those into stitches. So, you use your stitch count to track how many miles. Just kind of some notes. Anyway, they have a nice spreadsheet and everything that you download in. Um, it just is on Google Drive and you just keep up with it. So, anyway, I'm working my way to Rivendell. And then they have little quests and everything, but I'm way behind on those. So, I'm going to try to work on figuring that out this week. So, um, let me do a haul and then I'll show you some starts I have planned. Um, and with Magical Stitches, they have, apparently this next book is going to be really whip heavy from our whip album, so we can update and change them. Um, 
So I've decided I'm going to switch out um, a lot of my whips with some new starts, some other whips that I'll actually enjoy working on. So that's going to be fun. So um, actually, no, I'm going to save that for next video once I establish my whips because we have until the 30th to do that. So I'm going to save that for next video. So we're going to do haul and then um, plans for magical stitches and we'll go from there. Which will be adieu and good night and all that fun stuff. Get all of my... Oh, I know what that is. Okay, hang on. Let me reach over here. This is what happens when you're gone and haven't done a video for a while and everything kind of gets everywhere. Um, so... There is some haul that it's stitchy related, but not in the way of like actually stitching on fabric or flosses. Not nothing like that. Anyway, um, it's some things I got going in the works. I had to get zippers, lots and lots of zippers, and then I had to get some rings, more rings, and actually my computer is sitting on five containers of the, uh, you know, bead sorter, floss sorter boxes of charms and zipper pulls. Anyway, so it's all for something. It's in the works. It is going to be stitchy stuff. It's more sewing stitchy stuff, but it will then go with cross stitchy stitchy stuff. So yeah, anyway, got several things with that. Um, I got some more, let's see, in the time that, since I've seen you, I got my Moe's floss, and I decided to switch out from the, uh, fabric of the month to, yeah. you know, you're gonna craft it when you get fuzzies in your mouth. Anyway, um... I decided to switch to her back to the her floss of the month, and I'm just getting her right now her solids and her her new silks, both solid and variegated. Um, I don't really use the variegated as much. I'm still figuring out projects for those. So this, but the solids I do use. So I definitely definitely like those. So these I picked up quite a few of these because hello Gryffindor, Gryffindor. I'm exhausted. Can you tell? Exhausted. And I was watch I was catching up on floss tube, so I was watching Coffee Stitcher. And he was showing off Gryffindor stuff, so I got Gryffindor stuff in my head. And of course I'm starting to play Wizard Unite United Wizard anyway. Basically Pokemon Go, but Harry Potter. And <laughs> as awesome. So yeah, I'm getting totally off topic here. Did I mention I was tired? Uh, with Pokemon Go, where I work is a Pokestop. Which is really awesome to work at a Pokestop. Um, because when that it, regeneration of characters and getting stuff, it's a perfect place to do it is to work at a Pokestop. With Wizards Unite, the my office is a greenhouse. <laughs> so, and the beauty is my sister also plays it, so, and she works on the lower half of the office. It's a two-story. The upper story just has a single office where I am with the dogs. Anyway, so we got the greenhouse, and it just, it's always having stuff around us, which is awesome. Um, so I've gotten quite, quite far, just sitting in the office. Anyway, <laughs> back to floss. This is Parakeet. So it's much more vibrant in person. It's a beautiful vibrant green. Let's see, do I have... No, nah, not showing it. Anyway, it's a very... it. It's a Slytherin green. It's gorgeous. Anyway, so I got four of those. Because one can never have too much green. And then... There's another color I really liked. Arctic. Good sky color. That's pretty true to color. I have a blue and white. And then 
got Bumblebee. And I must say, I like how she's packaging her new ones with these little ties. It's probably a lot easier for her if she has it. Well, I don't know, maybe. I like it a lot. And then um, we got one of Candy. It's more of a pink red in person. It's kind of showing a little more orangey on screen. Then I got her Sherbert Silk. I love this silk that she is using. It is wonderful to work with. So if you're looking for a good silk, it's a good price, do the most sale silk. It's awesome. So she does um, variegated and then solid and it switches out. And then, of course, I had to get two of these because, again, Slytherin. And this is Tea Plantation. And it's just, so again, brighter in person. This is a darker green, more of an emerald green. Anyway, but it's this pretty green variegated silk. Just a green tone on tone, which I like. I like the tone on tone ones. Anyway, so that was that. And I also got my last of the fabric of the month with her. This is a 16 count Aida. It's kind of a blue to green. So maybe a good mermaid one. I don't, know, I don't, I don't stitch on Aida a ton, but um, I still do. So, and it has that Moe's sales smell. Okay, and then um, Color and Cotton was having a uh, mystery grab bags. And so I decided to take advantage of that because I have never used um, Color and Cotton. And I want to say Coffee Stitcher uses... Uses color and cotton a lot. Anyway, so I'm like, this is the perfect time to try it. Because um, they they were very, very well priced. Anyway, and they came super fast. I'm just taking them out of there. They came in these little bags. Just taking them out. I, I haven't even taken them out yet, guys. I mean, this is how crazy it was. I haven't even taken most of this stuff out to even look at it. Okay, so I got four grab bags, and I know there are duplicates. So I'll just kind of show the, the colors. So we got this kind of blue, darker blue, and this variegated sea greeny kind of color, teal, gray. Anyway, it's really nice. I really love the feel of it. I, oh, I'm, a, I'm a sewer. I have fabric. You got to touch it. You got to feel it. Anyway, so that was the first grab bag. And then the second grab bag was very similar colors. Green, blue. This was kind of a, sorry, I hit my computer. Kind of a lighter cream. And then this one had kind of this purple, cream, red. Another one was kind of that sea blue, a nice pretty green. And then the last one, a bit of the blue, red. Anyway, I'm really excited to use these um, in a project. I really like the feel of them. So, and it does say it's color fast. Not that I wash my projects anyway, so it wouldn't really matter. Anyway, but I'm really excited to try these out. I really like the feel of them. So, I just have to figure out how this. I just have to figure out what project to do. Okay, so this next one is is a gift. It's a, it's, this is a thank you haul. Came in, uh, I think, about a week or two ago. First video I've done since then. So, but I just want to say, so when I did my first, well, when I did my, I think it was my Mira's, uh, my Mira parade, uh, I had a gal contact me and ask me to, ask me if I had a pattern. Um, which I didn't have, and then uh, she said she wanted to send it to me, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. So, Shelly, thank you so much. It did come. Um, so she sent me three for tea, which I think is such a cute, I love it. So, I think what I might do with this one is maybe switch up the hair on it, because one could be 
me, one could be my sister, one could be my best friend. So we were, uh, my mom always calls us Chicky, so I'm Chicky 1, my sister's Chicky 2, my best friend is Chicky 3, <laughs> so, anyways. Then she also sent me, which I'm really excited about, uh, a Victorian Motto Sampler Thread, mint green. Okay, I've also never used this, never had one, so, but I've heard amazing things about it. So, now I'm like, <laughs> two other floss... I need to start collecting and getting and using and add to my ridiculous collection. So anyway, she sent me that and that. I mean, how sweet was that? Anyway, thank you so much, Shelly. Very excited. Um, definitely have to find a better fabric for that. You need to find something where... Maybe like a forest set. I'll have to look through some of the, some fabric flair fabrics. Go through that. Um, okay, and then my last my last trip up to before I left on the cruise up to Cindy at Citri Express. Picked up some little patterns. So this is a Hinzeit. Hinzeit. No, I however you pronounce it. Hinzeit. Um, and this is the phrase mini block bookworm. I'm the bookworm. I learned how to read when I was four, and I haven't stopped. So, my mom likes to say she created a monster. And we love it. Um, so we got Bookworm, and then, this was cute. Now, I, I got this, I grabbed this one because I really do wear flip-flops a lot. So, I lived for um, 18 months in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And, um, for those of you who have lived there or traveled there or whatnot, you do not walk around barefoot in Brazil, in the houses. You don't take showers barefoot. You, you just don't. You really don't. Um, anyway, so everybody wears flip-flops. Um, Avianas are the, the ones that are made in Brazil and you can... Actually, now even get them at the Disney store. They've got Disney Avianas, which I have almost all of them. <laughs> um, I have a lot of flip-flops. Anyway, so I got really used to wearing flip-flops. I'm actually... I'll show you the ones I'm wearing right now. Ugh, this is one of the Disney ones. So this is the Aurora. And it's not a prince. Wake me up later. So, anyway. They... This is kind of the older style. They've got a newer style um, that I have as as well. I've got well, I've got one of them. They were out of my size of the other one, and one I think was Snow White. And I'm not a huge Snow White fan, but I'll probably end up getting it anyway. I mean, it's funny because my husband's like nobody even sees it when you're on your feet. Well, the thing is, in the states, we can walk and then we can take them off and walk around barefoot, and then you can see what's on them. So. Anyway, um, so then I got two more Victoria. I, I did this because as I was doing the inventory on it, I'm like, we can't sell this. It's dog-eared. I'm taking it. Cindy just laughed. So I got my Chibi Ariel. Yeah. I actually have a fabric. I don't know if it's... No, it's down somewhere in that... Anyway, I think I'm gonna do her kind of like on a, maybe a purple-esque fabric, purple sparkly. I think it would just be so perfect. Anyway, so I picked up that one, and then grabbed this one as well, because when I printed off barcodes, I was one short, and I'm like, I'm not printing off another barcode. So I got the little Chibi Moana. Love, love, hey, hey. Okay. The voice, they, there is a voice actor for Hey Hey. It is not just chicken noises. It's an actual voice actor. And I love him to death. I have loved him since I first saw him, heard his voice in, um, oh my goodness, Brain Freeze. Um, yeah. 
Anyway, it's Alan Tidyuk. So he also does the voice of the guy from Whistleton, as he calls it, from Frozen. Weasel Town. And if you've seen Zootopia, he's the voice of the weasel in Zootopia. Which makes that even funnier, considering he, uh, you know, selling bootlegged Disney films. Watch that part again, it's very funny. Anyway, Alan Tudyk is amazing. Amazing. Um, so... He's awesome. Okay, now this is gonna bug me. Now I need to look up. No, oh, apparently he's also in Wreck It Ralph. Anyway, he is hilarious. Firefly. Okay, see, I was gonna say Serenity, but Serenity's the movie, and I was trying to remember the name of the series. Firefly. Anyway, he's the pilot in Firefly. If you haven't seen it. It's just one season, and they canceled it, which is very sad, because it's a very awesome series. Also got the Angel of Cross-Stitch, and I'm pretty sure this is the updated one that has all 489 colors, the entire DMC collection. But, again, I've got to find a better fabric to do it on. So, got that. Uh, then I put an order in with Teresa, um, Kitten Stitcher. Uh, she had a, a sale going on, so I jumped on that. Okay, check out the tissue paper. She sent it all in. Yeah, I saved that. So one of our stops on the cruise was um, Puerto Rico. And they have the, the vendors with you know all the, a lot of the homemade stuff and everything. Anyway, one of the gals I bought something from, I swear, was wearing this fabric as pants. And the same print. Or one very, very similar. But her pants were the same. And I was like, ah, oh, I know that. So. So what I got from Teresa was uh, her Andale 1827. Uh, big and beautiful. And these are both um, Shakespeare's Peddler. And I believe they're both reproductions. Well, that's a recreation. Yeah, re yeah. so they both are. Anyway, so... Glare. <sighs> the little sticky piece from the, <laughs> the bag came off. Ah! Hello! You won't let me go. Okay, there we go. Here we go. That's a really pretty one. Yes, Teresa has gotten me into samplers. Oh, way too many. Oh, so many. That's a pretty good... It's gonna be a pretty big one. I think it's... Um, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Uh, if you do it on a 14 count, well, it'll be only uh, 28 and 3 quarter inches by 38 inches. Mm -hmm. Ooh, two, and a, two and a bit feet by 3 feet. If you do it uh, 40 count, it is 20 by 26. So, nice thing is she gives all those different sizings. So anyway, this, is, this one's a beast. This is a big one. Really big one. I'm excited to start that one. Um, and then I also picked up from her Eleanor Farrow, 1842. So this is a smaller one. Yeah, this is like a, on a 14 count, it'd be 10 and a half by 14 and a half. But I love Asian stuff. So I love that pagoda there. So. <laughs> She has a little note on here that says, The original sampler was stitched in wool with shades of purple, magenta, a slimy green, black, rust, gray, dot, dot, dot. It was, dot, 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 interesting. I usually don't change the colors of my reproductions, but this one is more pleasing to the eye with my changes. I love the shepherdess with her dog. 
and the pagoda. You can see the shepherdess over there. Right there. And the little dogs. Right there. Get closer. Looks a little... I know it's a dog, but it looks a little bit like a monkey. It will be a dog named Monkey. How about that? It's the best of both worlds. Um, I also picked up from her, so she um, also works with the bee company with the buttons that has like taken the world by storm. Um, so she had some exclusive made just for her, and so I had to pick those up. So these are little buttons that are little bobbins with a cat on it and a little heart. That's a little set. And then she had these made that are like floss bobbins with a little cat. So I got one in blue. One in red, one in dark gray, one in light gray, and one in cream. Okay, I may be allergic to cats. I'm a cat lover, so let me grab. Now that I'm on this side of the table, I can grab other stuff. This was my cat growing up. Let me get with that there. That is Zach. She was solid black, solid black cat, gorgeous eyes. Um, and when we when we got her, we thought it was a boy cat, and so we named it Zach because at the time we were the Power Rangers. The original Power Rangers were really big, and Zach was the name of the Black Power Ranger. And um, then we went to get her fixed, and um, the vet stuck his head around and said, "Your he cat is a she cat." Um, but the name stuck. We couldn't change it. Anyway, so she she lived yeesh. She lived a long time. She lived a really long time. Uh, I think we got her 90 94, 95 and she, she finally passed away in 2008. So, she lived a very good life. She, uh, she survived through fire evacuation. She survived through moves. Anyway, I was homeschooled. She lived on my lap. She always, I was, yeah, I was her favorite. My sister was her scratch and toy. Um, okay, let's see. A few more, Paul, and then I'll show the project. So, got the, uh, part five of the Jack. Frost Tree Farm. Um, it's the hot cocoa. Get some hot chocolate. Um, original printing. Yeah. Yeah, I got the twenty-five dollars. Yep. was pretty awesome. So, then my fiber lit, or no, let's do this one. The, uh, Under the Sea fabric, fabric of the month came in, and it's Celine. I get hers 32 Lugana. It's gorgeous. Purple with some blues. Anyway, love it. Gorgeous. So much this is on this fairy mermaid anyway. And then my fibrilicious fabric of the month came in. This is 32 linen opalescent. I get fat quarter of this. And this is cobblestone. And it is awesome. So grays and tans. Anyway, it is beautiful. I cannot figure out. Wait to figure out what I'm going to stitch on that. So that's a very fun one. Um, so I love I love getting my hand dyed fabrics. I love the variation. Um, if you're in the cross stitch creations or whatever group it was that had the fiasco about fiberlicious, I love her stuff. Anyway, I think the admin finally closed the thread on that because it was getting a little crazy. There was one lady that was like. She had something against hand dyers. It was it was a little ugly, but 
Anyway, love Fiberlicious' stuff, and we'll keep buying it. I know I got a hand-painted one from her somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So when I find it, I'll show you. Okay, plans for Magical Stitches for this week, because I have, like, not been able to do it for the last three weeks. Um, that's really how crazy it's been around here. So, um, we're in the last bit of, uh, the year four. So it was the end of, um, the end of book four. Uh, so the, the final challenge and all the chaos that came with it. Um, and so there's, uh, there's six, uh, parts to the, this, this week's work. Um, let me, let me pull up the actual, shrink this down a minute. So I want to pull up the actual wording of the video. I, when I do the, uh, homework, I just write how many stitches and then just the general description. So I don't, you know, write the, there, everything has a full sen, you know, a full sentence, like because of this stitch on this, because of this stitch on this. So let me, let me read the actual. Okay. So for the first one, um, is Harry and Cedric touch the cup at the same time. So you have to stitch on items that are touching. Make sure I got these all right. Okay. So I, I'll show you because I already showed it to you. So I'm going to be stitching on, yeah, on Spooky Tree by Rovarius. I'm going to be, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is work over here and do the pumpkin and the tree. Because the pumpkin and the tree are touching. And on the way, I'll be doing some leaves. So I'll be doing 200 stitches on that. This is also going to um, do the second one, which is he who cannot be named attacked at the tournament. And you're going to do 200 stitches in gray or black. Just going to keep working on the tree. So this will get 400 stitches in it. It'll get some love this week. So that's number one and number two. Number three is Cedric's passing. Uh, you know, he, once they touch that port key, he doesn't live much longer than that. Um, and for, the, for those of you who are a Doctor Who fan and, um, you know, know th that David Tennant is the one who played um, the... Ministry of Magic Eye's son, who kidnapped, who takes Mad, uh, Mad Eye Moody's place um, as David Tennant. And so the joke is that the fourth Harry Potter is actually the Doctor, because David Tennant also plays the Tenth Doctor on Doctor Who, um, was the Doctor trying to stop Twilight before it happened, because Cedric Diggory plays Sparkly Vampire. You know, with him being announced as, as Batman, I'm I'm gonna give him a chance. You know, he did good in his role, but that was just a role. That's unfortunately it wasn't a great role. Um, no, I never read the books. I got through half of the first page, and I I just I couldn't do it. I've heard the movies are decent though, so I don't know. Anyway, it could be interesting. So anyway, Cedric's so passing. We're supposed to stitch on a grave or a graveyard scene. So I'm pulling out my last stitch cemetery. I'm gonna keep going on that grave there. So that'll, that'll be uh, 100 stitches on that. So the next one is um, Harry's parents appear to help him. And so it's stitch on um, uh, a project that you needed help with, either choosing floss, choosing fabric. So I'm pulling out my Ink, ink Circles Reflections of London, 
And so with this one, I needed help figuring out floss because I discovered after I'd started it that I did not have enough of the original color silk I started with. So I'm doing these all with most silks. And so some very wonderful, helpful suggestions. We're using all four colors. So that's where I am right now. And so we're just kind of going to, it'll look cool when it's done. So you're putting 200 stitches in on that. And that's another Fiberlicious that was in one of her kind of wonky sales she had. I got several different sizes. Okay, um, for the Professor Mad Eye Moody Deceit, which I already mentioned, um, we're supposed to stitch 200 stitches on um, a project that uh, is an ingredient that's found in Polyjuice Potion, and you have to stitch on that. So, I'm going to pull out a new start for this one, and it's the uh, Beauty and the Beast by Victoria Ivchenko. And I'll probably work on the Beast. Hair is an ingredient, probably the, one of the most important ingredients in Polyjuice Potion, so I'll be working on the hair on that. And I'm pretty sure the center is like right around here, so it'll be perfect. And I am doing this one on um, a regular party fabric from Fabric Flair. This is the May 2019, and it's called Old Tail. Because we know that it's the tail as old as time. So I like the kind of the color variations. There's some red, there's some blues, there's some tans. I think it'll work really well with that. And then, so we're going to put 200 stitches on that. And then the last thing is that Harry um, donated all his winnings to the twins, the Weasley twins, to open their joke shop. And so we have to put 100 stitches into something that makes you laugh. So I decided to pull out um, a new thing from Market, and this is Pickle Barrel Designs Fantasyland. When someone told me that I lived in a fantasy land, I nearly fell off my unicorn. <laughs> makes me laugh. So it makes me laugh. And I'm doing this one on uh, Under the Sea Fabric. This is a 32 Lugana and it's Incoming Storm. So this is kind of a leftover piece that I have. Um, I like that it has some color variation. So I'm going to be starting that one, putting in 100 stitches on it. Okay, I think that is all for tonight. We're almost at a half an hour. Then again, I haven't done a thing in, what? A month? Anyway, I'm going to get better than We're back on schedule. Back on schedule, people. Um, I think my plan is going to be try to get it recorded and uploaded on Wednesday. We have high upload speed, which is nice. Um... So yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to work on changing my whips around for Magical Stitches, so next time um, I'll show the whips that I did for that. Um, seems like a lot of people are doing whip parades right now, kind of the middle of the year, starting the whip parades. Um, so I'm going to excuse the mess behind me. I've been, I've been crafting. I actually have a thing that says, where is it? Creativity is messy, and I am very creative. You should see the desk in front of me. Anyway, but I'm going to tilt this back. So right down there, there's totes. I'm on my laptop. So that one is patterns. That one is the old whips that I had. Those are whips that have been started. These back here are kits or ones that I have set up already with fabric and um, pattern. I've got, I've got a lot. So, we're going to be putting that together. So, I'll do that, and then I think uh, probably the one after, the video after that, I'll probably do a, a whip parade. I think that'd be fun. I haven't done one, and I have a lot of whips. Anyway, I'm going to end this before we get to an hour, to keep all my videos under an hour, maybe, until we get to the whip parade, and then it's going to be crazy. So, I hope everybody has uh, a great week. Um... Enjoy life. Enjoy the end of June. I can't believe it's already the 4th of July next week. Oh my gosh. 
So, um, yeah, anyway, I will see you all later. Bye.